Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and I wanted to speak this message on a subject that uh, probably you haven't thought of or have never heard about, but it's on the subject of the ubiquity of God. Now, the ubiquity of God is an amazing aspect of God's character and God's nature, which kind of goes misunderstood uh, by Christians, by people. In John chapter 1 and in verse 16, the word of God says, and of his fullness have all we received. All right. Now, what does it mean to receive all of his fullness? All right. Now, ubiquity is broken down into ub, which means equal, and cuity, which means where. So, ubiquity means to be equal everywhere. All right? To be equal everywhere. Now, we've heard about the omnipresence of God, and you may say to yourself, how does this differ from the omnipresence of God? I know that God is everywhere present. That's what I've heard. That's what I've been taught. And that's what the Bible teaches is that God is omnipresent. And that's true. That is true. But ubiquity brings it to more light. All right. Now, so how does ubiquity differ from omnipresence? Well, the only way I can explain it is you're watching me here um, and right now I have my arms and my hands on this table in front of me. I have my, my uh, uh, I'm sitting on the chair and my feet are on the floor. All right. So my arms and my hands are on the table. Uh, my butt is in the chair and my feet are on the floor. So I am present at all three places. I am on the table, I am on the chair, and I am on the floor. All right? So the thing is, is am I present in all of these, those three places? Absolutely, I am. But the difference is this. All of me is not present at all of those places. All right? All of me is not, my hands are not on the floor. They're on the table. But am I on the floor? Yes, my feet are on the floor. My feet are not on the chair. They're on the floor. Okay? But am I on the, am I on the chair? Yes. I am on the chair, but my feet are not on the chair. My hands are not on the chair. My hands are on the table. All right? So, omnipresence says that God is everywhere present, and that's true. But ubiquity says that all of God, listen, listen now, all of God exists everywhere. You understand? <laughs> we have to take it out of the human realm, out of our human understanding, and we have to begin to think about this, all right? Omnipresent says that God is present everywhere, and that's true. Ubiquity says that all of God, all of God is present everywhere, all right? regardless of how big or how small, if it were possible, that you could cut God into pieces, it doesn't matter how big a piece is of God. All of God is represented in that piece, regardless of how big or how small it is. All of God is there. All right? Now, in Colossians chapter 1, and verse 19, Colossians 1 verse 19 says, For it pleased 
For it pleased the Father that in him, in Christ, should what? Some fullness? No, no. All fullness dwell. For it pleased the Father that in Christ all fullness should dwell. All right? Matthew. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, at the transfiguration, what happened? Peter and James and John went with Jesus up on the, uh, up, up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the Bible says that, that all of a sudden, the glory of God, all that he was in himself, Jesus Christ began to reveal itself. And he shone with this bright light. All of, of God's nature began to, sh began to stream out of him. It'd be like light, lights shooting out from him. Bright light. The transfiguration, the, an outward revealing of all of God that was in him. And this is what ubiquity is, is that Jesus Christ Though he was in a physical body that was approximately five to six feet tall, who knows? Let's say it weighed, he, he was a carpenter, so let's say it weighed 220 pounds, 210 pounds maybe. <laughs> we don't know, nobody knows. But, and, but the thing is, is that in this physical body dwelt all of God. All of God, the fullness of God dwelt in his body. And on the Mount of Transfiguration, you were, Peter and James and John saw all of it. They saw all the glory of God inside that body. All right? John 3. John chapter 3 and in verse 34, it says, for he whom God hath sent speaks the words of God. For what? For God gives not the Spirit by measure unto him. Oh, no. God doesn't say, well, oh, Jesus, let me see. Hmm. Let me see. Your body is uh, six foot tall. You weigh 207 pounds. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, okay. I'll give you this measure of Spirit. <laughs> no, no. No. He, no, the, the, the fullness of the Spirit was not given by measure to him. You know why? Because God is an ubiquitous God. All of God is, is everywhere present. Not just, not like us. It's not like a human. You, you gotta get out of that human term. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta back yourself away from the human understanding of omnipresence. That God is everywhere present. Is that true? Absolutely. But more, but to define omnipresence even more to an to a to a higher degree, you need to say that the omnipresence of God is actually ubiquitous. All right. To finish, in Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one and verse twenty-three, it says, "Which is His body." the fullness of him that fills all in all. Now, Jesus Christ fills us with his fullness. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in the Lord? It means the Holy Spirit resides within you. God has set a seal upon you, the seal of the Holy Spirit inside of you. And if the Holy Spirit is inside of you, then it means that all of God is inside of you. If Christ is in us, if, if we are baptized into Christ and Christ is residing in us and the Holy Spirit is in us, then all of God is in us, not just some small portion. No, no, not just some little piece of God. Like, well, I have a representative piece of God. It's like, it would be like, <laughs> it would be like going to Niagara Falls and you take a cup and you put, you put a cup under there and you catch some of the water and you seal it up and you take it back home and you say, here, look at this. I've got Niagara Falls in this jar, 
right? And you show them a jar of water. <laughs> you don't have Niagara Falls in that jar, right? You can't do it. In this world, we can't do that. It would be like taking a rock, right? Taking a rock from Mount Everest and saying, look at this rock. This rock is Mount Everest. No, it's not. <laughs> but the thing is, is that with God, the ubiquity of God says that even a little portion, even a little portion of God is all of God because God can do it. Okay. Here in this life, we can't do it. You can't take a rock and say, well, that's Mount Everest. No, it's from Mount Everest, but it's not. But all of Mount Everest isn't in that rock, right? All of Niagara Falls isn't in that jar of water. But God, but God, with God, all things are possible. Listen, with God, all things are possible. Don't limit God. I'm telling you. The ubiquity of God is that God is all, all of God is everywhere present. And if you have Christ in your heart, if you have the Holy Spirit living in your heart, then you have all of God. All of God is living inside of you. Yes, the powers that created the heavens and the earth. It doesn't make you God, no. But all the powers that, that created the heavens and the earth, the, 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 the vast wisdom of Almighty God is residing within you. Because God can't, you can't, you can't break God into little pieces and say, you know, God's arm isn't there, God's eyes aren't there. No, God's not like that. The ubiquity of God is that all of God is everywhere present. And if God is in you, then you have all of God. All right? <laughs> God bless you.